Sure, I, I just thought I'd better tell him. He doesn't know. Well, he will when he reads this. So that's I've written the letter. Is everything all right? Yes, yes, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's my birthday. I couldn't bought me a moped. <laughs> a what? A moped. He said for ages he was going to buy me some sort of transport of my own. And, and today he gave it to me and, and it was a moped. <laughs> oh, dear. There were these big trousers with it. Plastic coat and this helmet. Hi, I'm Helen. <laughs> he thought it would help me to meet people in the traffic. <laughs> because it's spreading sunshine. Helen, I'm sure he didn't mean any harm. No, no, he never does. It's just it's just it came on top of everything else, and I I just don't want it to happen again. You're leaving him, aren't you? No, no, I, I just <laughs> To find my own space and, and it. Oh, just give him the letter, will you, Laura? Yes, of course. Yes, thanks. Bye. He's still doing it. How can you get that much out of one bird? I'll get on with it, shall I? We'd be extremely grateful, Mr. Wilmot. It's not just a health hazard, you understand. We have an important visitor due here shortly. That's it. There we are. Here we go. Here we go. This is Titan, is he? That's right. He's big, isn't he? Just stand back, please. Ho, oh, Titan! His eyesight's not up to much, is it? I think he's up there. He don't understand it. I think he's eating a corn, Mr. Wilmot. What are you talking about, Colin? The drugged corn you made us put down for the pigeon, Mr. Britloss. That eagle's eating it. Drugged corn? Titan! <laughs> Corn did it eat, Colin? All of it, Mr. Brittus. I don't think too much to worry about, Gilbert. Little drop of alcohol is not going to harm a bird that size, eh? Still tidying up, Carol? More rearranging, really. It was Mrs. Brittus's idea. She said little Ben needed more space and light. Oh, good. So I put him in a bigger drawer. <laughs> I fixed the light bulb, and I've cut out lots of little pictures from a magazine for him to look at. Well, be careful, won't you? Why? Light bulb in a confined space get very warm. Can it? <laughs> a straw box and a hundred watt bulb. That's how my mum used to cook the turkey. <laughs> Excuse me. Welcome to Whitby Utah Leisure Centre. How may I help you? The name's Kitson. I'm here to see the manager. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I shall be right back. But I have to go and get some cold water. Murderer! You bloody murderer! It was a simple accident, Gilbert. I can quite understand you're upset, but that's no excuse for attacking me or my staff with a dead eagle. Do you know how long it took me to train that bird? With respect, you could have trained it a little better to do what it was supposed to do instead of make a beeline for the corn. I'll oh, kill him, I'll swear it, I'll kill him! Darling, get him outside, will you? Make me hurt! Kitson. I believe I'm expected. Kitson? <laughs> Mr. Kitson! <laughs> Mr. Kitson, come in, Mr. Kitson, come in. Welcome to our leisure centre, Gordon Britter's manager. <laughs> You've got blood all over your hand. Yes, yes, indeed I have. Perhaps you'd like to meet some of the staff here. This is Timothy, one of our foot soldiers, but a good man nonetheless. And this is Linda, one of our keenest, liveliest members of staff. <laughs> Timothy, I'd take you through to the restroom if I were you. Right, Mr. Griffiths. Now, who else can you meet, Mr. Kitson? You're having some sort of problem, are you? Problem? No, 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 no. Just a pigeon loose in the gymnasium, that's all. <clears throat> I think we'll revert to the original plan, Colleen. What was that, Mr. Brittus? Get the cat, Gavin. Oh, right, Mr. Brittus. 
Now, Mr. Kitson, what would you like to do first? Well, I usually start with a tour of the building. Excellent idea. <laughs> Why don't we pop through to the restaurant, pick up a soft drink, and Shouldn't then... you be getting changed? Quite right, yes. If you'd like to wait here... I can I'll show him round, Mr. Bredas. Colin? We'll begin with the basement toilets and work our way up. Colin? <laughs> Come in. I hear the inspector's just arrived. Yeah, it's Colin showing him round. Really? I'd have done it myself, but I had to get changed. Oh. Not a good start, then. I don't think it would have made any difference, Laura. The numbers. That's all that counts these days. If you don't have the numbers, and we don't, do we? Mr. Brittus, it may not be as bad as you think. Come on, Laura. You and I both know the score. That man's here to do a hatchet job. By next Monday, there'll be someone else behind this desk. I've said I thought it should be you. Me? You've recommended me? I don't want some stranger taking over our staff and upsetting them, Laura. They're a team, forged and bonded over the months, welded into a unit. Look after them for me, will you? I'm so sorry. This must be a terrible time for you. Don't worry about me, Laura. I'll be all right. Yes, of course. After all, when Kitson has done his butcher's work, at least I can go home, can't I? To three beautiful children, a loving wife. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. <laughs> One day, Laura, if you ever get married yourself, and I don't think it's too late, even for you, You'll realise exactly how important that is. A loving wife, a happy home. I've got a letter for you. It's from your wife. I gave her a moped today. <laughs> Brittus? Well, Colin, if Mr Kitson wants to see the figures, you better show him up. I'll be waiting. Do you want one, Laura? What is it? One of these forms the inspector gave us. If you have any criticisms of the way the centre is run, please list them below. <laughs> I've done four pages so far. <laughs> you better take one before we run out. I don't think I'll bother, Tim. Mr Kitson said it's all completely confidential. Mr Bristol will never know what you said. Oh, come on, Laura. It's our one chance to get rid of him. There's no need, Julie. What? He's already going. Britus is leaving. He doesn't have a great deal of choice, Tim. Ask Julie, she typed up the attendance figures. Mm. I still think we should fill these in, though, to be on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be fired, Julie. He knows it himself. He's just told me. How's he taking it? How do you think, Gavin? I mean, whatever else we may say about him, he cares about this centre, and now he's lost it. And on top of that, well, I probably shouldn't say it, but you'll know tomorrow anyway, his wife is leaving him. Really? And when a man loses his job and his wife on the same day, writing a detailed criticism of his management style seems... I don't know, seems a bit unnecessary. Rather disappointing figures here. Yes, yes, they are, aren't they? I mean, you run a lot of excellent activities, but nobody seems to come to them. <laughs> Is there a reason for that, do you think? Well, personally, I put most of it down to apathy. Yes? Only last month, I set up a brand new course to help the overweight come to terms with their self-image. First week, we have a light-hearted session with a measuring tape. <laughs> Second week, no one bothers to turn up. <laughs> Very discouraging, Mr. Kitson. And uh, what are the staff like? How would you uh, describe them? First class, you could not ask for a better crowd. Dedicated, loyal, keen, professional. It's all good, Mr. Brittas. Colleen. Sorry, Mr. Brittas. <laughs> it's just, it's worse than ever. The pigeon? No, no, the pigeon's gone. The cat ate it. The trouble is, it doesn't want to come down. 
the cat? It's just sitting up there, <gasps> washing its whiskers. I think it's waiting for another pigeon. <laughs> Let's just leave it there, shall we, Colin? I don't think that's wise, Mr. Britain.